In April of this year, LEGO brought the Indiana Jones theme back from the dead with three brand new sets. It was supposed to be four. Alongside the Lost Temple, the Temple of the Golden Idol, and the Temple of the Military Plane, even though LEGO does not make military sets whatsoever, one more temple was designed to release alongside them. That, of course, being the Temple of Doom. And when it didn't hit store shelves alongside the rest of them, people were slightly unhappy. Don't get me wrong, right? I love Temple of Doom. It's my personal favorite Indiana Jones film. But from the highly insensitive depictions of different religions and cultures, all the way to the fact that it's kind of terrifying, I can see why a brand that cites children as being their superheroes doesn't fancy making sets on the child slave death cult movie. Do you see what I'm saying? So, Lego may have high morals when it comes to what they make sets on, sometimes, but I don't, so I want to make my own version. I don't want to just piece for piece recreate the exact set that was going to release all those months ago. That's boring and it's already been done. I had to decide what I wanted to build from the movie, and taking from the set, I think the statue of Kali is probably the most iconic thing from that film. I want to take some inspiration from this set and create something more like a diorama. I just think it would be fun to get different bits moving to create the different statues go or whatever. So yeah, that's, that's basically this video. Remaking the Temple of Doom if it was a diorama theme. If this movie was gonna get a set, you better hope it's 18 plus. So that's what I set out to build, and this is what I came up with. And here it is, my Temple of Doom statue of Kalimok. I love how this turns out, and I really just want to go through all the intricate details of it with you, because believe me, this mock has been in the works for a long time. And to complete the mock, I've created a slew of purest custom minifigures and upgraded minifigures to really help make this stand out because we don't have to use those 2009 figures anymore. Let's take a look at them. First up, we have the main man himself, that is Indiana Jones. He is shirtless because he doesn't wear one in this scene, despite what the original minifigure may tell you. I've also got a rubber band going around him to represent the band that he has. He would have face paint on, but that piece doesn't exist. Up next is the Scream Queen herself, Willie Scott. The main thing I had to change was the hair and face, because the original hair was a little bit boring, and those old Indiana Jones female face prints? Oh boy. Speaking of bad face prints, short round. Um, the face print that this guy had in the set was very, very questionable. So I definitely had to change that to a more scared face and the hat to be a little bit more accurate as well. Up next we have Shatter Lol, probably one of the least interesting characters of the scene, but he was in the scene so he had to be there, so I just threw a pretty basic custom of him together. Here we have Temple Guard 2, which is what his name was in the original set. This is probably the least changed figure of the bunch, the only thing I did was really give him a leg print, because his face isn't criminally offensive like the other ones are. Temple Guard 1, I basically had to do a pretty much purist custom because that figure is more expensive than Molaram for some reason, but I'm happy with how he turned out and I put two of him in the build. And last up, of course, is Molaram. I love this guy. All I really changed was giving him a dress piece. Shame I couldn't really find anything with a good print on it, as well as a new face because the old one just looked a bit weird to me. But that's all the figs. I started with a basic black frame around the bottom, but similar to the Temple of the Golden Idol, I wanted to give it a little bit more texture to make it more interesting, so I added some wedge plates to look like rocks. For the actual quote section, I put a torch on either side just to give it a little bit more detail down there. The quote itself would of course have a Temple of Doom logo on it, and then for the quote, there was only one that I could think of that pretty much sums up this movie. <laughs> You can see that I'm replacing the tiles with the ones from the Temple of the Golden Idol set. I wanted to print these off and make some nice custom stickered tiles, but when I tried to print it off, it came out like this, and I do not know how to work a printer, sorry. So yeah, we have to scrap that. I'm super proud of how my lava technique came out. 
It's entirely snot based with seven different colors running in two different directions. Just moving down, basically getting even hotter as it goes. Starting from dark red, moving all the way to white. Really like how that gradient turned out. Just above it, you can see we've got another layer of dark gray rocks. And then on top of that begins the actual platform made out of light bluish gray bricks with just different bits and pieces smattered in just to give it a little bit more detail. Around the front here you can see I've got a bit of a curved section which I'm really happy with. And that's topped off with some pretty interesting techniques using some panels even though these are not actually connected by anything. They kind of just sit in this little gap. But it fits nice and snug in there so it's all good. The actual top of the front section is made with a snot platform but the rest is just bricks on plates creating a slightly awkward difference in height but this top section does lead into my first feature of this mock because just how the temple of the golden idol had a couple of knobs you could move to make things move i wanted to do the same thing and the first is found in this little skull right here now if you're familiar with this scene you'll know that once this wheel on the right spins these doors should open and I wanted to make it so that just that happened. This was a lot easier said than done. This was the first prototype that I came up with. It looks fine, it's got a nice Technic system within it that means when you spin the rod the wheel spins with it. The issue is, is that you can probably tell it just spins far too slowly for what I want. It means the doors would open at such a minimal speed if I were to spin it by the wheel, meaning it just didn't work for me. Prototype 2 was an improvement, not by much though. You can see I've got the wheels directly connecting to this new system and that connects to a gear train. Issue is it's just far too unreliable, it keeps catching, it doesn't work smoothly enough and the gear power is not strong enough to actually move the doors that I want to. Speaking of the doors, there was an old system for this as well, uh, it's this massive hunk. Yeah, it's just way too big pretty much and every time I try and move it, it just keeps catching. This was, yeah, far too big for what I needed to do so I ended up just making a much smaller version and putting that in. But here was the version I actually ended up going with. It's simply just a gear in the back that when you spin, the door opens. I couldn't connect it to the wheel in the end but this is the best I could do. I decided to put a little red light in here to represent the lava running in underneath so you don't actually look down and see all the Technic mechanisms in the gap. But basically with this light in here, it means that when I do open up the doors with that gear system, it creates a nice little red light, which gives a really nice atmosphere to the whole mock. And I think this looks so cool at a couple of different angles when you can't actually see the lava underneath and you can't see the bad Technic mechanisms, but you can just see that ominous red glow showing up onto the cage. Super happy with how this turned out. And you may see just behind the pit with the skull on it, there's another little gap here. Well, this is for another function I worked into the mock, which for some reason in the film, there's this little platform behind the cage area where Roller Ram just rolls under the floorboards randomly. I don't know why. So I put in this little system here where you can drop the figure in and then spin a little knob that I've got on the left side of the mock and he'll disappear into the gap. With a slight push, because I didn't realize he wasn't wearing his headpiece in the scene. There we go. Moving behind that once again, we have got the next section of the mock. First is the small platform that holds the skull. Really happy with how this came out using some dark red to represent blood. Yes, blood on the bottom of this plinth type thing. And then above that, we've got this skull, which holds the Sankara stones itself. This was so difficult to build. I'd already built the legs, so I had the maximum size that it could be, and I pretty much filled that almost directly. But I think it looks really cool using actual studs as the teeth and just about fitting the Sankara stones in its eyes and nose. The skirt section of the statue I've actually created using tank treads, which I think is a really interesting technique, and I'm really glad how it turned out, because I was quite iffy on whether it would actually look good, but I really do think it does. Moving further up, you can see we've got the skull necklace with actual Lego skulls, because of course. Speaking of skulls, you can see that the two in the statue's hands are made from a piece that was found in the old Indiana Jones sets, which I think is a nice nod back to the original theme and each of these arms have a chain which connects back to the cage. More on that later. These two arms are th quite a lot thicker than the other ones, as you'll soon see, and they just stick directly back into the body themselves. In terms of the other four arms, one on the top left represents the large sword, the two on the bottom just sit on top of the columns, and then the one over to the right 
represents a face using some interesting parts in there such as like a jackhammer piece, a bucket handle lid, and a couple of the weird parts in there as well. The reason those arms are so thick in the middle is because I've got a nice little function at the back that if you pull back this little black bar here, those chains start to move. And because those chains are attached to the cage, when I pull or push the bar at the back, it makes it look like Willie Scott's heading straight for that lava pool. It's actually quite a simple feature when you think about it. The bar is attached to the chain, so of course when one moves, the chain goes with it. But it creates a really nice effect, especially when you're looking at it from the front and you can't actually see the bar. I just wish it went a little bit lower. Without a doubt, the most difficult part of this mock was the face of the statue and trying to get that looking right. This went over multiple revisions, one of which I've still got to this day. This is what the first version of the statue head looked like. Yeah, it's just huge. There was no way. The size of the statue that would have had to be to fit this is insane. To get that mouth angled the way it is meant for some pretty intricate building on the back side, which wasn't very stable. This version also has some old grey mixed in, which I do like as a technique to make it look more worn down, but I just didn't have enough pieces to make it work. Like this bit separate, the eyes are built on independently. It's a cool technique and I'm happy with how it looked, it just didn't work for this situation. I do still like that crown of swords though, I still think that's really cool. So whilst this didn't work because of its size, I ended up having to build a smaller one, and that's how this turned out. It's much closer to what I had in my head, and I really like how it looks. And I was still able to use a fun piece for the crown. That's minifigure hands, with a little frog on top. So that's it for the statue itself, but I still had some interesting things going on around it, such as this brick bending technique, which is the first time I've actually done one for these columns using a bunch of 1x4 plates, leading up to this section at the top. And I think this change in dark tan works as a nice little border for the statue to make the colours a little bit more interesting. There's also a large black background which I think also makes a good backdrop, even though it reflects every single light I've got pointed at this thing, which is slightly annoying. But that's pretty much everything covered. And that's pretty much it, my interpretation of a Temple of Doom mock. Now, of course, LEGO would not make this, there are hundreds of illegal building techniques, those legs are held on by a thread, thousands of pieces too many, and far, 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 far too violent. But a boy can dream. Anyway, thank you for watching this. I'm really happy with this mock, even though it took months too long. And if you like it as well, might as well like the video. And subscribe for more fun mocks and other random LEGO content when I can be bothered to upload. Thank you. Bye.